Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Adorama TV's How'd They Do That? Well, today on the show we have Matt Hill. Matt is an artist, he's a cut paper artist, a still photographer, a videographer, he's a social media giant, and most recently, he's the founder of the website Togs for Togs. So welcome to the show, Matt. Thanks, Mark, it's a pleasure to be here. Well, Matt is joining us through the magic of post-production um, and all kinds of editing, so uh, we're very happy to be doing this today. And Matt, you're on this show specifically for us to talk about your film, Available Night. So tell us a little bit about Available Night and uh, what the story is with that video. Well, I heard that there was a contest being held by Nikon, and I figured uh, the rules were about you could make a video with anything. And often I do make videos with anything, so... I uh, grabbed a camera, went out and made a video. And uh, the details are the fun part. And so you shot, I believe, about 5,300 still frames to make this video, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I set my camera on uh, JPEG mode and uh, shot 5,200 frames for this. That's absolutely true. And so tell us a little bit about that. I mean, why would you shoot uh, stop action photography versus just using a camera that does video what made you decide to shoot in, in that mode, basically? Well, I do have access to a large variety of cameras, you know, but uh, the one that I had available that night, during available night, was my Nikon. So I figured, with my experience with stop motion and my, my love for bending time, I figured that uh, I could compress an entire night much faster and with a lot more fun by shooting with the still camera, which, you know, being a photographer at heart, you know, like I know how to control the camera and what I want to see one frame at a time. Uh, and it made a lot of sense to me to approach it that way. And, and it's a phenomenal effect. In fact, before we go much farther into this uh, interview, I want to show a clip. This is a few seconds of the, sh the show, or the short film, Available Night by Matt Hill. Let's take a look. Well, that's pretty impressive, Matt. So tell me, uh, with the still shots that you did, uh, what camera did you use um, and what lens did you use to get that really nice, crisp, shallow depth of field? So tell us a little bit about the gear that you used. Uh, I shot the, the I shot with my Nikon D700 uh, in JPEG, the highest quality JPEG, but the smallest JPEG mode. Uh, and I shot with a 50 millimeter 1.4 G lens and the 14 to 24 lens. Uh, everything was manually metered, uh, and I would pull out my meter, meter at first, and then set my camera and start blazing away at the highest frame rate I could with my D700, which is five frames per second. Wow, so uh, you were shooting at five frames per second. Did you uh, have any kind of storyboard, or did you, I mean, how did you come up with the, the, uh, the story, and how did you know what to shoot, and how did you work all that stuff out? Did it just come from your brain, or how, how did that happen? Well, the story kind of happened on its own. I, I knew that I had one night to shoot it because I had a lot of other things on my plate. So I said, whatever I do, tonight I'm going to make a film. So I picked up my camera, and as I walked out my door, I started shooting. And throughout the entire evening where I was just going out with friends and having some fun, I just kept documenting the night in bursts of JPEGs. Uh, a lot of the story developed after words when I was editing it. And that's often what happens with me. It's my process. Uh, I guess I'm more of a documentarian at heart where I like to make the story afterwards. So you treated this project like a uh, going out and shooting your raw materials. That's your five and a half thousand shots. And then you brought those into your edit bay and sort of chiseled away and edited and refined that to get the finished product. Is that your methodology? Yes. For this particular project, that's what I did. Um, I 
one of my passions is editing. So what I like to do is just get a, a massive amount of information or visual information, audio, and actually put it together. And they, that's one of the most fascinating challenges that I've, I've found in you know creative projects today. So uh, I brought it together and I realized that it didn't make sense to start from the beginning or the end. Or I just decided to reverse the entire night so that at the end there was a funny little twist where it ends with hi, I'm Matt, which was like a, ha ha, hey, I'm here kind of thing. Uh, for better or for worse, you know, it made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really, really funny, especially if you know that you're Matt. Um, so it, it feels to me like the film plays backwards, sort of like Memento or something. Was that intentional, or is that just sort of what happened in the edit? Well, there's a certain point during the editing process where you either decide to take a gamble or not. Uh, in this case, I thought, what the heck? You know, like, I, it seemed to make more sense and it was more visually appealing with everything going backwards to the film. So I tried it as an experiment and I fell in love. So I just continued going that way. And I think it turned out pretty phenomenally. We're about out of time, but before we go, uh, can you just briefly talk about the editing software that you used? How did you edit? What software did you use? And how did you get all those frames into your computer? Uh, the, the edit process was pretty fun. Uh, I bought a piece of software a year or two ago called iStop Motion HD, into which you can import a series of still images, and then I exported that for Final Cut from there into a, a 24p timeline. And I used Final Cut Pro to edit uh, both the, the video and the audio, and the audio was made on two different coasts. So the drummer was in San Francisco, and the keyboardist was in Brooklyn, and they gave me the file separately, and then I mixed them within Final Cut. Well, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Thanks, Matt, for joining us. Well, thank you, Mark. It was fun to be here. And thank you for joining us. Now, remember, you can see Matt's film in its entirety at the Adorama Learning Center. You'll also find links to all the gear that we talked about today and additional tips on photography. Thanks for joining me this week, and I'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.